Welcome to Indo European Unity Channel. Thank you for joining us. Today we have Hapsburg University with us. Uh, thank you, Kalyani and Marla, for joining us for this session and giving us a time for uh, information which would help our students to plan their education in 2021. The stage is all yours, Kalyani. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kalyani from uh, Hampstead University. I uh, work as an international student coordinator for uh, the students who would like to study and I will I will also support the students before, during and after the education. Mirella, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, my name is Mirella. I'm also working uh, with recruitment and admission uh, international students. Uh, I'm also responsible for the scholarships. Um, I'm also following you from the day you start to apply and until you graduate. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, students, we would like to uh, start with a small presentation about the Hansen University. And post that, we will spend some time on admission requirement. And after which we will talk about the unique selling point on Sweden. And then with this some FAQ session. So I will take through a short presentation. I will keep it as short as possible, max like 10, 15 minutes maximum. So let me know if you can see my screen. I guess, yes. Yes, we can see that. Perfect, I will just make it slideshow. Yeah. So, welcome to Hamster University. What is Hamster University? It is um, an innovative university with different perspectives where uh, education, collaborations, and research being the main focus for the future development and future generations. Our vision is to be, is to be a creative and innovative university, and we try to offer a top-level student experience and a very good uh, standard of education to our students. We also try to uh, work with collaborations for vitality and use. <clears throat> so let's talk something about Sweden. What is Sweden? Sweden is a home of innovation. I am sure that many of you are aware of. Uh, it is the land of Nobel Prize. There are many innovations coming from Sweden. Uh, according to the European Innovation Scoreboard, Sweden is the leading EU country in innovation. And some of the examples are Volvo, Ikea, AstraZeneca, Husqvarna, and Spotify. There are many more, but these are just some examples. Oh yeah, let's talk something about Swedish innovations. Uh, if you're aware of the three-point safety belt in the car, it's uh, innovated here in Sweden by Volvo, Tetra Pak, that you get uh, the milk and uh, the juice, all these things. The Tetra Pak has been innovated by Sweden as well. Shell Celsius scale, safety matches, zippers, computer mouse, you know, the one click games, it has been started from Sweden. GPS, Bluetooth, Skype, there are a lot of techno technological innovations that came from Sweden as well. Yes, about the Hampstead city. Uh, we are about 100,000 inhabitants, nature around the corner. Uh, Hampstead is a small city, very famous for uh, our beaches. We have three beaches. We are called Summer City. Though it's a small city, everything is accessible, very close to each other, very entrepreneurial. And we have a lot of uh, medium and small size companies uh, within Hampstead and Holland region. That's famous here. Hampstead being, yes, we have been awarded as the student city of the year 2019 and 2021. So you can understand the student life is quite good here. And where is Hampstead located? If you see that Hampstead is located on the west coast in the south, we are located quite south. We are very close to two big cities, Gothenburg and Malmo in Sweden, and also Copenhagen in Denmark. So if I have to get to Hampstead, we would say Denmark. Uh, the capital of uh, Denmark is Copenhagen and Copenhagen is a place or the airport that you can get. And it's just two hours train from Copenhagen to Hampstead. And being the advantage of being uh, living in South part of Sweden is that we are very close to other countries like Germany, Denmark, France, Italy, very easy transportation, very cheap. And you can make use of your Schengen visa as well modern campus. You can see that we have a lot of different study environments. 
like we have a lot of project rooms group uh, you can book the rooms and do your group works and very international very summery it's called a summer city and the campus is so beautiful during the summer and there are a lot of um, you know computer rooms that you can use you can everything is so multicultural and we are very very supportive to the students who want to use the resources in the campus and very innovative uh, study environments there are different kinds of labs our famous labs are fab lab and electromagnetic lab there are other uh, labs like uh, innovation labs digital lab computer smart innovation lab and recently we also have an innovation hub innovation innovation lab so these are our basic labs and all the students can use them and we actually suggest them to use as much as they can make use of it and try to uh, create a prototype or do uh, something for your thesis or projects that would be very helpful education for the future is our main uh, objective and we have uh, approximately 12 master programs we do offer master programs unfortunately we do not have any bachelor pro any bachelor programs that we offer to our uh, international students and some of our programs uh, all of our programs are mostly into engineering and technology health and lifestyle environmental science business administration we can go through the individual programs in the next session and if you have questions of course you can ask us and our main intention is to focus more on collaborations because many of our programs some other other way are collaborated and connected with industries very close closely through case studies projects or um, you know there are so many reports and assignments that you have to submit and you will be given the actual ta tasks from from the company it's a very real time hands on experience that you have to perform this is the main objective of, of all our programs that we have some of the other collaborations within our courses. Our potential partners, if you can see here, you are aware of big companies like Volvo, Ericsson, HMS, H&M, PJ, Eleiko. And we do have a lot of other collaborated uh, partners within Holland region and Hampstead. As I told, as I mentioned before, we are quite famous for small and medium sized companies and entrepreneurs. And uh, another interesting subject is uh, entrepreneur. So if any of our students are interested in becoming entrepreneur or they want to start up a business here, then our uh, student incubator, which is called HiFi, is quite famous. And uh, if you have a business idea or a strategy, you can visit HiFi, you can uh, create, they will help you to create a business plan, create network, build up the networks and get sponsors. If um, the, uh, one of the best example is the success stories of HiFi is we have a company called Eli that has been started from uh, two students of industrial management and innovations. This is a sustainable uh, company that is, um, it's, it's a production company where they produce uh, sustainable products, cutlery, plates. So there are many success stories from our Hi-Fi. So if you are interested, you can visit the website and you will know more information about that. And apart from our proper educational things, we do have extracurricular activities like one of the popular and famous program is SEEP which is called Student Employability and Experience Program. This is an extracurricular program. This is a platform where uh, a student can build their future career. They can learn the basic Swedish language. They can understand the business culture of Sweden. And you can also create your own uh, CV. And this program helps you in CV writing, meet the companies, industrial visits, and you also get a very good experience because uh, you see, you meet people from different cultures and different countries. So more, more countries and more cultures, great innovations come to that. So this is a very good platform you could be interested in. And to be part of this program, you have to be a student of Hampstead University. So once you are admitted, 
then you will receive an invitation from us for an interview. So it, there is a selection process within this program. You cannot directly apply to this program from our admissions website. This is a program within our master programs. And this is like um, evening classes. You need to attend the classes in the evenings. Yeah. So let's talk something about fun part. <laughs> student life. How is student life here? If you are interested in uh, any specific games, you can create, you can meet up our uh, student association and start your own interest there uh, because I'm talking to the Indian uh, visitor here. There is a, a cricket team as well here in Hampstead. So if you are interested, you can be part of it. You can play badminton, you can sing, you can play football, floorball. So there are a lot of opportunities as a student here. And uh, yes, our student union do organize uh, certain trips to explore cultures and traditions. Uh, it is, I can say every year we have this Northern Lights, uh, a trip to Northern Lights in uh, Lapland, as well as there are uh, other trips to moose safaris, deep forest trekking and um, within Sweden, as well as outside of Sweden, there are trips and also within Holland region, you can visit the beaches, you can visit the forts nearby. So yeah, and if you have any certain interest, you can also um, talk to our student union. If they can organize it, they can organize, they will organize it for you. And apart from that, being an international uh, place, being an international uh, university, we would say many of our international students are also interested in um, organizing their own traditions and they would like to uh organize it in the university which is possible and we have done it before as well like uh this year we have had um in august uh, there is this uh, ganesh chaturthi and last year we have added so there are some things if you are interested you can organize it through our student union this is some information about Hampstead university and we have a facebook group if you are interested, you can part. You can be part of our uh, international students at Hampstead University, and this is our admissions email. You can ask us questions, basic questions, in our Facebook group as well. Yes. Thank you, Glenny. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. a lot for the information. I think this was the uh, good cover of the information we have. When we talk about students, uh, there are a lot of students have different questions when they come to, you know, they want to go abroad, they ask for the admission, they ask about visas. I think uh, admission possibility is one of the very important questions when it comes to Sweden, because a lot of people are confused whether I am eligible for Sweden or not. The first thing which we see, we have to give a very uh, deep clarity to students that why uh, students from India with a three-year bachelor degree cannot study in Sweden. So I believe if you can just give us a, a, a bit overall understanding of the uh, kind of profiles you're looking at, and then we can jump on to your slide probably where you have all the programs. So students who have a three-year bachelor degree, do they have any chance to study with you like a top-up degree program, like Linus University has top-up uh, programs, or they just don't have any chance? Okay, first of all, I have to explain why three-year students are not eligible. Okay. Yes. Uh, the eligibility criteria to study a master level degree here in Sweden is 180 credits. So it doesn't matter to Hampstead or Linnea or any other university, it is 180 credits. And for which, if you compare the number of courses that three-year students do in, in their bachelors, is not enough and is not equivalent to 180 credits. So that is the main reason that they are not eligible. We don't want to exclude them. But it, they cannot, it is not possible for them to study master level education. So they need to have minimum of um, uh, maybe more than 50 courses in their bachelor. So th this is the main reason that we cannot accept bachelors who are not engineering or who are studying uh, three year bachelors. And if you ask me if there are any other options, yes, we do have some courses within uh, like advanced level courses, but then um, after these courses, they can of course apply, they can combine all the courses and then apply for a master uh, program. But uh, yeah, we have network design and computer management as a course that they can apply for, but for which they need to have a bachelor's in uh, 
mathematics and in something related to the course. Hmm? Would you like so, to? I think there was a, there was a thirty ECDS point course we are talking about. Uh, the, it's a sixty credit course, yes. right? Yeah, it's a sixty one year. Yeah, it's a one year, and it's very it's Cisco certification. It's very yeah. practical. Um, a lot of labs. Um, so it's a one year course. And I also just want to add for the students who are interested in this course, if, if they want to apply, if any of the students who have three year bachelors and they want to apply for this course, please make sure that you have some background in computer science networking so it's because this is more into languages, this is more into networking. CCNA is, it's not an easy certification course. It's a bit more intense program. And I have seen students who had troubles, of course, but then they had some extra classes, online um, classes of uh, networking or .NET or any kind of language program. And then they, they, they could overcome, they could complete the program. Otherwise I have also seen students that they are disappointed and they couldn't finish the program in time. And who did the Cisco course, CCNA course, and when they are in their final, like the second semester, there are uh, many students who actually uh, got jobs as well. So they have to be a little bit more focused, very hardworking to finish the CCNA program, networking program. So, so can we say that students who have non-IT background, they, will, they cannot study this program? They will have I to have say an they cannot study this program, but you know, it will be hard for me to judge how a student can study this program. It's also right. about the, the zeal that they have. If they want to finish it, of course they can finish it, but I would say it will be difficult for them. Because um, if you ask me, if you ask me questions on electronics or communications, like, oh yes, I know this, I know, I will be very quick in it. But then if you ask me something about civil engineering, that is not my background, you, you understand? So then I will take, okay, I need to know, I need to learn more. So that, that's a different concept. Okay, yes, and so also, yeah. Maybe yeah, Mirella, you would like yeah. to add something. Yeah. yeah I just want to add that the course in network design and computer management, you're actually studying with Swedish students and a lot of other students from different backgrounds. And all of those students have the right background. So they will, you're working in groups in labs. So if you don't have the right background, you will not manage. And then you will maybe stop studying and it's frustrated, uh, frustrating. Yeah. So bright background to these courses are very important. Great. So can I say that uh, we have a lot of coders uh, who have the, you know, a typical bachelor in arts three years, but they're coders, you know, they have, done, they have learned the coding, they do coding for the companies, they're working in the Gurgaon or, you know, even in South India as well. So uh, students who have a non-IT background, but have a good coding knowledge, you know, uh, probably a software knowledge, will that be a good candidate for this program? Uh, no, the requirement for this program is mathematics. I, okay, I am mathematics. sure uh, the BA arts, they don't study mathematics. No, no, no. Yeah. So we can say, Mathematics has to be there, which means that either it has to be a business background with the mathematics or yeah. it has to be a, a bachelor degree in mathematics with the three year program, mm -hmm. uh, which we have typically, you know, uh, bachelor of honors uh, in mathematics. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. All right. So, can, can we just go to your slide where you have all the programs available so we can just quickly go through them? Sure. I can share my screen again. This one, I guess. I believe uh, there was there were all the pro yeah, yeah that's, that's yeah, this sure. Yeah. So yeah, great. We're talking about the engineering technology program. Let's just jump into if you have a four year bachelor degree in engineering, of course you qualify for the ones which are under the engineering programs. No, this no, just, not like this that. Is, no okay. I have to be a little bit more specific. Um, okay. If a student is from mechanical engineering. They yeah. cannot study information technology or embedded and intelligent systems. Of course. So okay. another requirement for to uh, to get or to apply for master programs is that you need to have similar background. For example, okay. 
uh, an IT student, computer science, electronics uh, student can apply for embedded intelligent systems or information technology or electronic designs or network forensics or engineering smart, uh, sorry, energy smart innovation. Yes. Okay. But they cannot study mechanical engineering. And it's the yes. same. A mechanical engineering student can study industrial management and innovation or digital service and innovation, but not, uh, you know, electrical or computer science programs. Absolutely. Yeah. So basically, uh, I think the uh, electronic IT is mechanical is, you know, more or less very well defined programs. The digital services and innovation of the program, which I believe can be uh, taken by uh, Mostly student with a uh, IT program, student who have an IT engineering, yeah, a bachelor IT, in IT. IT as okay. well as uh, they, they are a little bit uh, flexible because they do accept sometimes uh, business administration programs as well. Because this program has a combination of engineering, uh, you know, sustainability is the main um, focus of the program, and sustainability could be part in business. So okay. even business so, administration students are sometimes eligible. It's it's a little bit flexible background for digital service innovation. When you say business background, we are talking about three plus two format. Three yeah. years of bachelor's and two years of master's from India. Yes. Uh, yeah. Or maybe one year master's. Combined to four years. Great. Yes. Yeah, I think some of the other way, they have, yeah, in some of the other way, they have to meet the requirement of 180 yeah. credits. Super. So, uh, I'm in the course for electronics, electronic design again for electronics, uh, information technology. Students with a uh, bachelor degree in electronics and communication, yeah, they would can they be allowed to do this? Yes. Yeah, by, right? okay. Industrial management and innovation, is yes. it open to specific engineering programs or all of them? Uh, any engineering program. Okay, super. Uh, mechanical, of course, it's quite obvious. Network and uh, forensic is. Uh, for the IT, IT I, I suppose. IT, yeah. IT. And uh, for the students who are interested in uh, cyber security, you know, the ethical hacking, high cyber security. So this network forensics is the program for those backgrounds. And yeah, IT, computer science, they can apply for it. Will the uh, person with the electronics and communication also apply for network forensics? Yes. Okay. Energy, because smart innovation. And communication is networking, you know. Yeah. So energy and smart innovation, will this be open for other fields as well? Or it will be yeah, I can explain on the... it. This is a little bit uh, <laughs> complicated uh, discussion, but I will be more clear here. Energy smart okay. innovation in the built environment. This master program is more to the civil engineering electro, uh, electrical students, electrical engineering students who want to change their background. For example, they are not going to study anything about thermodynamics. They are going to study about smart innovation in the construction. They are, even a civil engineering student cannot study, um, in this program, they are not going to study about construction, the actual construction materials. But instead, they will be studying smart way of construction. Like you can talk about electricity or maybe smart construction. Uh, in in the construction in the civil engineering field, this is uh, this is the focus of the program. So maybe if a student is very much interested in thermodynamics or energy conversion, uh, if this is not the program for them, this is more like um, innovation, product development, and uh, smart uh, smart innovation, smart built environment that is that is the focus of the program and electronic student can apply electrical student can apply civil engineering students can apply to i believe this program leads to a smart city opportunity because yes. the smart city opportunity is quite big these days and in the coming yeah. years it's going to be more bigger and mm -hmm. uh, the student with this this kind of a program we already you don't see this program a lot you know mm -hmm. typical Hampstead University is uh, quite uh, famous. We have a research in uh, smart cities and smart innovation. That's the biggest uh, research area that we are working in as well. I think it's Sweden itself is very uh, yeah. you know, a hub of innovation. So when you yeah. see things, uh, you know, when you talk about Sweden, I think innovation is the first thing which comes in my mind that I have to define somebody why you should go to Sweden because it, this is the first important thing, you know, that Sweden is about innovation. I think it's about more about the Scandinavian culture, but I think Sweden is 
leading the culture in task in maybe about the innovation part and specifically the the companies and the the, the research works have what is happening in sweden is really in a different aspect to other countries in european union okay let's coming to the health and lifestyle you have nordic welfare which i believe a small change had been done in this mission requirement recently i have yes. seen an email coming up yeah can you just tell us about the mission requirement for this program yes uh, nordic welfare students who have a background in business administ administration humanities and uh, nordic uh, yeah welfare or um, sometimes psychology and so supply chain management they can apply for this uh, law as well politics international yeah, religion yeah politics law yeah 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 you can add uh, yes i'm just jumping in kiryani <laughs> yeah 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 please Wait. add because it's recently changed the requirements are recently changed okay so basically social sciences and business background students yeah. uh, can apply for this program great you can and i believe it will you can exclude all the engineering students in this program Don't oh yeah they have a lot they yeah. have enough to apply for. Exactly. so we have something for the students from the social science background so students yeah. if you're looking for a a good program you know uh, uh, let me if you can just talk a bit more about the content part of nordic welfare of course mm -hmm. it says it is clearly but i think to understand uh, which side we are going in this particular program yeah the the i like the question because many students get confused of welfare systems uh, this is about the societal changes so for example uh, if you if anybody they want to learn about how the nordic um, system or the municipality works or the equality sustainability discrimination or uh, diversity this is the main uh, parts main courses that they are going to study in in this program and they will have questions okay after this program what is what could be the career opportunities they could work in uh, municipalities the um, commune uh, municipalities health innovation they can be part because it is part of the society so anything that is related to the um, aspects of society they they can work on for example in the first semester they will do a lot of courses and in the second semester when they come into thesis they can connect their ideas of uh, maybe they want to work something specific in the society example they can connect that part to their thesis and create a thesis project great so okay. yeah and that is the main uh, background of this program so we left it to environmental sciences uh, of course i believe uh, this is for the student with the environmental science or biotechnology students or student with the which yeah, other yeah. background are uh, Uh, anyone who studied cell biology this is a program for wastewater management or um, okay. how to clean the air pollutants in the air so this is more on environmental science program quite a popular program I believe in the coming years but actually now itself this is yeah. where we 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 specifically in india i think it uh, is it to the it everywhere <laughs> it is i mean definitely everywhere but i think you still have a better air quality in sweden yeah. than we have in india at the moment <laughs> so yeah definitely much needed in india um coming to the business administration strategy entrepreneurship for the international growth yeah. uh, we are looking at which kind of students and we have uh, two programs in business administration one is strategic entrepreneurship in international marketing and strategic entrepreneurship in strategic leadership so business administration students can apply for this program but i know that there is no bachelor of business administration in india for uh, four years so they need to have 3 plus 2 years okay years okay. of bachelor like, two years. yeah so you know so, you uh, yeah the, the, the students who come with the engineering background mm -hmm. with a management and a business experience can they also apply for the program no uh the 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 interesting thing is students i am an engineering student i was an engineering student 10 10 years back maybe so i studied electronics and uh, communication in my bachelor's but my interest when i couldn't actually study the networking then my interest was in something like engineering management so then i would say industrial management and innovation is the best program for the students who have a bachelor in engineering and want to do a business administration because this is the perfect program for those who want to study business and because it has the technical aspects of business 
and uh, this is quite famous program and this is also a program that works closely with fab lab that i mentioned before as well as mechanical engineering so okay. yeah for engineering students there is already an option for industrial management and innovation there they are going to study about product development project management courses business model innovations simulations so i don't think so they will be interested in business administration and they are not eligible okay Cool. So uh, we have uh, covered all the programs, uh, I believe, and then we have uh, this networking program for one year, which we have discussed about. Uh, it's 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 a, it's not a it's not a degree program. It's a course. It's a program. Right? Yeah. 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 It's not a master program. It is a course. There are more yeah. courses on your university website. Yeah. And as a student, as a free mover, can can students pick up those courses as well? For six months, uh, if they have, uh, if they find something on the website like a program. Do you mean the psychology courses? Yes. The, yeah, uh, have media, media as well. Uh, yeah. Okay. Of course, uh, they can choose, but they need to have similar background, especially for uh, psychology program. They need to have the biomedicine or something related to those. Uh, uh, the program because the psychology psychology program is an advanced level program and I'm sure a bachelor degree is needed for the program as well. So it is 180 credits bachelor program. This is an advanced level courses, but this is not a master program. Okay, so basically, yeah, uh, they, it will only uh, it, it's it's going to be how much how many credits in this program? 60 credits and then uh, if they are still interested in the next autumn they can do their research uh, sorry uh, ma master uh, sorry thesis at master level but it's not a master degree so maybe it's a little bit complicated uh, they can combine the courses and the master thesis and then claim for a degree but it's a bit complicated okay so you have three programs two with 30 credits one with 60 credits the one with the 30 credits so if somebody has a, a psychology background and they do not want a full program, a lot of psychologists will come to us for a short term programs. Can they pick up the 30 credit points program? Yeah. They can. So I believe all the program requires psychology as a background. Yeah. All three of them. Mm -hmm. The requirements are also mentioned, I guess, on our uh, website. Otherwise, I think it's 90 credits. They need 90 credits, 90 at credits least for, their, the for the course, if I remember it correctly. Uh, it's quite new, and we no. haven't had that many international students because usually international students are interested in the degree. Yeah. Uh, so, um, and it's, it's new. So I think it's 90 credits for the course, 90 credits in psychology. And uh, for the other one year, is as, it is, as you said, Kilian. Yeah. Then we are left with one, which is media and lifestyle. Now, this is a course with which students can do with other backgrounds. And if they have other backgrounds, you know, with students who have a hospitality management or event management, mm -hmm. or probably you know, something else that I, would, I can't recall at the moment, but somebody who has different background, but have, we get a lot of student professionals who have education, a bachelor degree, and then they have, you know, they have experience. In the similar yeah. field, and they're looking for short term courses. And at the moment, uh, Netherlands is the only place we can offer them these short term courses. And then we have few courses we have started doing in, in Sweden as well. So, somebody who comes with a, a non business background, with any other background, can he do, uh, do this media and lifestyle? Um, I think I have to check because, uh, okay, it, 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 this is available for autumn 2021. Okay, yes, yes, sorry, I, I am thinking something else. Now I understand. Uh, yes, if a student is un, uh, interested in any kind of um, urban lifestyle or you can say the media, uh, they can apply for this course as well. But like you mentioned, uh, if they are interested, yes, but this is not a master program as well. Yeah, of course. So anything which is less than uh, 60 is going to be a, uh, just a short term course, I would say. Uh, so student be very careful when we, when we talk about the application process please make sure that anything which is less than 60 ects points is not going to be a master's program and even if you're going for a 60 ECTS point it's going to be a one-year master degree program and yeah. uh, there are certain uh, uh, certain other practical things you know when it comes to one-year master degree program 
which I believe uh, Kalani would, you, you can tell us better about, that the uh, students who come at the one-year program, they do not get a personal number. And how this is going to affect them as compared to students who have a personal number? I think it is just a myth that most of the senior students who are already, or sorry, but who are already living here, they have created about this concept of one year education. I came to Sweden with one year education. I finished my program. I am living here since last six years. And this is practical. Okay, I have to be very clear. Students who are coming here for one year or two years, doesn't matter, they have to study anyway. Though with or without personal number, doesn't matter. Because if- I ask this question then, <laughs> please. Sorry? Because I think you're, I ask this question intentionally because I, you, I think you're the best person who can give a, a good clarity. Because a lot of students come to me and say, you know, as a consultant, I may be misguiding them, but I think this is really important for us, what you're talking about, you know, in your own experience and how it, how the programs are kind of similar. Please, yeah. Yeah, because see, I understand that if a student want to study information technology, then they can opt for a two-year program or embedded or any program. But when they are interested in Nordic welfare or maybe applied environmental science, just giving an example, choosing another program which has, because it is a two-year program, it doesn't practically work. The main important thing here in Sweden is you are coming here with a student residence permit. That means that they have to study. It doesn't matter one year or two years. Okay, what difference it could make with the personal number? Yes, there could be some small challenges like bank accounts and things. But as a university, we are supporting them. We are helping out. And once you really do or once you finish the studies, there are much more opportunities and their degree is valued much more than before. So I don't really see a point why they have to choose two-year programs when they are interested in one-year program, if they are interested in one-year program. And I am sure it's in the beginning of the first semester or the first year, nobody understands why P number is. It is nothing but a social security number. It is used for health or it is used for uh, any other purposes here. But as university, we do offer an insurance uh, policy. There is an insurance, for we, we offer an insurance to all the students that they can use it for, for the health uh, system. Maybe yes, so, you would like to add, Mirala? Yes, I, I was just thinking of that for studying and living in Sweden, you don't need a Swedish personal ID number. You have the student ID number. The Swedish personal ID number is something, it's just a number. and to be able to study, live and everything, you, you don't need it. So um, a lot of students also when they arrive previously, not not that much latest years, I think, mm -hmm. they wanted to change, they were admitted to a one year and then they wanted to change to a two year. And when we asked them why, they said, oh, but the Swedish personal ID number. And when we start to talk with them, they said that they already have a bank account. They have visited the hospital. It worked with the health insurance. And then they, no, I don't want to change. They left because when we are discussing with them, they understand that I don't, don't really need this to be able to study and live in well, Sweden. Yeah. Great. Absolutely. I think, I think this is very important coming from you because uh, the students need to know what are the differences. So if the, as a university, when you're giving an insurance, it's yeah. as good as yeah. the insurance given by the, 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 the personal number, right? Yeah. I mean, they don't have to have any, any difference. So uh, yeah. yes, uh, so students, if you are looking for Sweden, please understand that going for a two-year program, you are committing yourself for a higher tuition fee and a higher living expenses also. So it's important that if you can find a program uh, under the one-year uh, program in, in any of the if they like the so program, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's not about only 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 ham study. If you if you find a program okay. which mm -hmm. you want to study and it's under one-year program. I should say you should go for it because your cost of tuition and the cost of living will be only for one year. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if a student is looking for a PhD in Sweden or in Scandinavia, I personally recommend to go, to go for a two-year program because this is where it's easier for them. You know, And a lot of universities in the European Union do not accept a student with a one-year master's degree. So mm -hmm. this is the, only for students who want to do a PhD. Do you uh, think it's, it's going to be? Yes. Uh, it, of course, it could uh, add a value to the PhD student, but it, um, 
it does it doesn't mean that only two year students can study research um there are actually i have to be honest in this case because uh, there are so many one year students who finish their education in time and got their phd's and they were settled much before the two year students you know in that case okay. that is an advantage because the second uh, the two year students they get confused with the p number and they they overwhelm sometimes and they don't sometimes they do not submit uh, they do not have enough credits to go on but on the other hand one year students do study or uh, i can say that their their education is as equivalent as two year students to do the research but in case if they want to have more courses or more um, even for research there are some courses that is mandatory so if i am applying for a research position and my masters is 60 credits example uh, maybe i need uh, two more extra courses i can study it for free when i start my uh, research it is not at all a big uh, deal it's a part of research uh, system you know so Super. i don't differentiate one or two year programs of course two year programs have more courses and more knowledge but it doesn't mean that they will get a research position because here in sweden research is more like a job position you know yes mm-hmm. yes so when we talk about the students who want to come for phd applying a phd directly from india of course there is an opportunity there is there is a there is an a, students can get phd position from india also and they also get it you know but the amount of number of students actually applying is very high and number of student getting a phd directly from india is very low so do you think coming to sweden and doing a master degree program one year or two year will really help and bring more chances for the phd admission definitely because for two year uh, education i can say that they have more time level they they can study for two years and look for um, research position for, from one year to they they have more number of days to look for the positions try to find uh, because you need to have funding either from the organization or the university or any company or some they need to have a funding source it doesn't matter which company or what kind of funding but they need to have a funding otherwise they cannot get a phd position it is not possible and of course they can apply from india uh, there is no problem in it but but for which they need to have much higher level of um, fulfillment of requirements and it is a little bit a uh, complicated process when someone applies from india to sweden but being studying our master programs here once you are connected with your uh, professors or teachers or uh, within the within the associate professors then it will be much easier because there are many internal positions as well and if there is a funding on a project it is also possible for a student to get uh, that uh, money to use for the research so i i would say there are much higher chances studying masters here and then uh, apply for a research great because that will uh, also think... make a student understand the concept of academic research you know great i think we will discuss on the admission requirement uh, something more about the uh, hampstead as a, as in a value addition so we we'll talk about the hampstead housing services do you have okay. your own house uh, or are you the student has to go outside for the housing services okay uh housing or accommodations are provided by our student union and uh, e- the students who applied and admitted for hampstead university receive an email from our student union and they they have to apply through the email and there are different options uh um, maybe someone is interested in single room someone is interested in sharing so they have to apply to the available options and they will receive an email from our student union but we do not offer accommodations to family members i think it's a common rule across the yeah. all the universities i would say yeah um, so basically the student has to pay the accommodation charges before he leave from india or when he has when he reach in in the, in the university he has to pay that time mm-hmm. student has to pay for the accommodation in advance or he has to pay okay. on the right uh, uh, no i think, think there are deposits but i don't know if they have to pay the rent no. for a certain time but there is a deposit in some cases but i don't i'm not sure because they have also but, changed 
Yes, because before actually they can arrive and then pay the uh, rent here in uh, Hampstead because the students are sometimes, you know, they they do come, but they don't uh, pay the rent. And they, there are there were some challenges. The student union want to have a deposit at least before they arrive here. Mm, I think so, but I, I'm not sure actually. Yeah, I think we have to check this. With the... Now when you're talking about the family and joining these students as well, I have a very important question, which is, you know, um, doing rounds in, in student community. Mm -hmm. Students coming yeah. to Sweden uh, with the families, applying the visa directly with, as a whole family, you know, like, mm -hmm. a, like a husband mm -hmm. and sometimes as a children as well. And if the student apply himself first and come to Sweden, the chance of visa approval, is it same in both the cases or is it going to be different? <sighs> My experience is that it can take longer time. I have mm -hmm. students, uh, they are arriving late, starting studies late because they are waiting for the family members to get approved. And as accommodation can be an issue, uh, we usually recommend that the student arrive first, start the studies, find an apartment for the whole family. And when everything is settled, then the family can come. Marilla, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, advocating this particular thing since many years. I, in all my videos, in all my uh, TV commercials, I am being very strongly and very vocal about it. Entire North India, you know. I even have a very strong debate with a couple of you know consultants as well that why am I telling people wrong thing, you know? And this is where I also differ that when students apply together as a family member, the, you know, uh, and family member and student together. Of course, you know, the application is seen and at once one way of seeing the application. And when student applied directly first and come to Sweden and you know handle his accommodation, his basics of you know everyday needs, it's much more easier and also less complicated. Because in the end of the day, if you see the students coming all together with the whole family for a one-year program, let's let's be honest here. Uh, it also gives a, a reason for the immigration office to understand it's a family immigration and not the education. Do you think we we are we talking the right sense here as well? The, well, the law. I want to say something. Yeah, no, Kian, start the law again. says that they can apply with the families, and we don't have any problems with that. But our suggestion is: see, uh, every student applies in the month of May, June, July. Imagine the number of applications in, in the embassies, they are much more higher. So if any student is applying with families, then the application numbers increase. And then you, so, you see, ah, oh, okay, this is a student, this is a student. It will be much easier to sort out the applications. One, it is if it is a single student, if it is a pair or if it is a couple, then they need to check twice. And then, ah, oh, this is a complicated application. That is also another reason that it takes a lot of time. And I would say in the time, once they arrive here and apply, I don't know why students doesn't want to do that. It's the same when, when, uh, when they arrive, it's much easier because yeah. imagine a family coming here without accommodation and they have no place to live or stay at that point of that, that night or that few days. It's it's very complicated situation, and even we are concerned, but we cannot solve it. It is not in our hands to solve yeah. this issue. Yeah, and also when we noticed that when the family members are coming later, the student has already settled. They don't have to. Then they will introduce the husband or wife. We have both cases that the female arrive first and yeah. male and children later. Uh, but then they are settled. They, they don't have to, because everything is new, the culture, the climate, the food, everything is new. And in that case, it's easier if it's only the student to find out everything. And instead of bringing children and everything, it, it's more complicated. So it's easier if the student arrives first and later on meet up with well, the family members and then it they can, and it's better for the family members. I would like that. Why should I come along yeah. and? Uh, a lot of stress. Yes. And in also the, when the when the family, because uh, when an individual is coming here, they can register the family members together with him, you, you, him or her, you understand me. So it takes uh, some time even to find the school for the kids, a place to live. And it's very much sorted. It is not, 
okay, I arrive here and I want to, I want to have, uh, I mean, I want to send my kid to the school and next day it doesn't happen. It, it, it cannot happen in just a single day, you know. It takes few weeks for the process because they have to be in the system, then, then it's a long process to go through. So even for that, it is very good to, to it, come yes. alone. And then and it's uh, usually a queue as well. The family members. Very true. Uh, I think we have got a lot of information about the basics uh, of the admissions. We got information about the university, the USP, uh, about the accommodation, and of course the visa for the spouse as well. I think uh, uh, students, if you are looking for studying in Hampstead University in 2021, please send us your questions. We can have another session with you. We can do. Uh, uh, we can come back to you with all the information you require for the planning your education and your stay in Sweden. I think uh, most important thing is that about the deadline because the 15th yeah. January deadline is the most important thing. Please note that if in case you miss this deadline, you miss the deadline for scholarships. And um, Kalyani, please tell us what what big, what is what is the meaning of scholarship, missing a scholarship, I think. Mirala, would you like to do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, she is better. Uh, we uh, yes, we offer twenty five or fifty percent scholarships. That this scholarship is awarded uh, on the admission and throughout the program if they meet the conditions. Okay. Um, so they apply at the same when they have applied for the master program, uh, we will and they are qualified. We will send an email to all qualified students, um, and it's an online application for the scholarship. They they receive a link with some small information. It's very easy to apply. Um, and then depending on how many students applying and how much funds we have, we will decide if we will get 25 or 50% scholarship. The last two years, we only had 50% scholarships. Uh, and then if they meet the conditions, they will keep on getting the scholarship. So it works very easily. But I also want to promote another thing. We also offer scholarships to students that already, they didn't get a scholarship when they applied. Maybe they applied late. And when they register, they can apply for scholarship for the second semester. And those scholarships are only based on study results at Hamster University. Uh, it's to motivate and promote that studies at Hamster University. And uh, we, we don't consider any other. Um, just the study results at Hamster University. So the chances are good. If they are a good student, they get a chance to get a scholarship as well. And this is offered for the second semester. And if you admit it to a two year, you can get it for the second semester and also the last semester. Okay. So it's That's also good. a good That's thing to know. Yeah, I think, I think this is very important because all the students who will wake up after 15 January, this is good for them because the ones who apply now will have a better chance, I would say. And uh, definitely, so you, you're giving a, a second chance. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update.